All right, so in this video, I want to talk about Audacity's punch and roll. So this is something that they've had in their program for a while, but it only gives you half the functionality, which pretty much makes their punch and roll useless for practically everyone, I hate to say. Uh, every time I get to this section in week two of my Learn Audacity class, I always have to tell my students, hey, I'm going to show you how to use punch and roll in Audacity for the day that they fix it, and that way you'll know how to use it when they do fix it. The unfortunate part is it's been a very long time, and and they haven't fixed it yet and I just I don't know why they haven't fixed it yet I really hope they do and look I totally get it audacity is a free program so you know beggars can't be choosers it's free you're not paying anything so you can't really complain too much here I mean you get a free program that it you know and audacity is an amazing program it's awesome it pretty much does everything that you would need it to do for a voice actor or for a content creator or something like that it's just there are a couple of quirks that I wish they would fix and one of them is punch and roll so in this video I'm going to show you a a couple of ways to get around punch and roll not really working so well in audacity there's a couple of things that you can do to get around it and make it work for you it's a little tedious and it's kind of annoying that we have to do it but i want to show you in this video anyway some other good news is my camera finally shipped, so I will be back to making normal videos at least by next month. So there's that. All right, so first, I actually want to jump over to Adobe Audition and show you guys how traditional punch and roll is actually supposed to work. So let's jump over there really fast, and I'm going to show you how punch and roll is actually supposed to function. All right, so now that we're in Adobe Audition, let me show you how traditional punch and roll is supposed to work. Let's just take something very, very simple. I'm just gonna count from one to 10, and I'm gonna say four twice instead of saying five, and then I'm just gonna go back and fix that. I mean, normally I know people would be recording really long chapters like audiobooks or something like that, but let's just keep it simple for time's sake, and let's go ahead and record that now. One, two, three, four, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, as you heard, I said four twice, and I'm gonna need to fix that. So what you would do with traditional punch and roll is you would find where the mistake is. So here we go, four, four. Okay, I said four twice. So what I would do is I would click my playhead right before the mistake, okay? Because that's where I wanna punch in and record or re-record and fix the issue. Um, so what's really cool is I'm gonna set this to punch and roll, punch and roll mode. You just right click and set it to punch and roll. And then now what's gonna happen is when I hit record, it's gonna jump me back five, 10, 15 seconds, whatever you decide to set it to in the settings. And what's really awesome, it, it'll jump me back and it won't start recording until it actually gets to where I've placed this playhead. So what's useful about this is if you're recording a really long chapter for an audiobook, and let's just say it's 30 minutes long, and then 15 minutes in, you make a mistake. You don't want to re-record that entire 30 minute long chapter, obviously. So you want to be able to just go 15 minutes in and then fix that mistake. But what's really cool is it'll jump you back and not record until it gets there so that you can get back into the emotion or the tone or the vibe that you were in when you actually recorded this. Because what'll happen is you might record this and then a day later, a week later, whenever it is, you're editing and then you find out you made a mistake. Well, the problem is you're probably going to be reading this a different way if you you were to just immediately hit record and go into it. So what you want to do is figure out what emotion was I in, what headspace was I in. I want to sound like I did when I was actually recording it at that time, because trust me when I say people listening to audiobooks will be able to tell if you punch in and re-record something and you're not making sure that it sounds just like it did when you delivered it the first time. So it's really beneficial for especially audiobook people, but really anybody for that matter. But let's go ahead and do it. All right. And let's just see um, how we can do this. Now, I'm not going to perfect this. This probably won't sound perfect, but I just, I'm just trying to show you how punch and roll works. So let's go ahead and do this. One, two, two three, four, four, five. Okay. And I could already tell you that's going to sound a little different, but you get the idea. So now what I would do is now that I've done this, you saw it pushed everything down the timeline. I didn't replace anything. So now what I would do is I would go ahead and delete four the second time I said it, right? I'm just trying to make that a good spacing. All right, now let's go back and let's give that a listen. One, two, three, four, five, 
six. You can definitely tell I punched in. So you would want to, obviously, you'd want to take your time and make this sound as good as you possibly could so that no one could tell that you punched in. But you get the idea. That is how traditional punch and roll is supposed to work. It did not do anything to the audio after the fact. I mean, you can set this to overwrite if you want to. And that way, you know, you could just overwrite and immediately hit the space bar and stop yourself. But I just had it in, um, in uh, punch and roll mode and then insert. So it's just gonna insert and push everything down the timeline, which is great because now you have all the flexibility in the world to work with the audio and not lose anything. But now let's jump back into Audacity and I'm gonna show you how they have punch and roll set up and it's not very usable. All right, so now that you know how punch and roll is actually supposed to work, let's dive into how punch and roll works in Audacity. So let's just do the same thing that we did over there, and uh, I'll show you what happens in Audacity when you try to use punch and roll. So here we go. Let's just do the same thing we did over there. One, two, three, four, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, there we go. And let me just make this a little bigger. Okay, so did the same thing we did before, so let me just go into it. Now, this is where I say four a second time, four. So let me go ahead, put my playhead there, and we're just going to engage punch and roll. Now, the way that you do this in Audacity is you just have to hold shift and press D, and that will engage punch and roll. And watch what happens when I engage punch and roll. One. Why? Why? What, what's the point of that? You see what just happened? It completely deleted all of the audio behind my playhead. I, it is just baffling to me why they would make this a function within their punch and roll. It makes no sense. I mean, there are very, very, very few scenarios where this might actually be useful. Um, so I don't know why they did this and I hope they fix this very soon. But if you're doing like a 30 minute long or maybe even longer audiobook chapter and you make a mistake 15 minutes in and you were to put your playhead where you made that mistake, you're going to lose 15 minutes of audio that you're going to have to re-record. It makes no sense. So I wish they would fix this. Um, but here's a couple of ways around this if you find yourself in this situation. So here we go. Let me undo that. All right, and so the first way to do this is you have your audio here. Just go to the very end of your recording and, and click right here. And then now what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and record our fix at the end of this recording, and then we're just going to cut and paste it in, okay? Now what I suggest you do to try to get back into your rhythm is count from one, you know, don't just go five and then think it's going to sound normal. It, it probably won't. It's going to be very hard to make that sound natural. Um, like I said, mine probably won't even sound natural because I'm just trying to give you a really quick example here, but let's go to it. Okay, let's do it. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, cool. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to the top here where you see the hand icon. It goes from the little um, hourglass to the hand. Okay, and then I'm just going to go like this and I'm going to go to where I say five. I'm just going to kind of guess, okay? And then I'm just going to double click it. Come on. There we go. And then I'm going to cut it. And I'm going to go to where I made the mistake here. Four. Cool. Highlight it. And I'm just going to paste it in right there. All right. And let's just see how this sounds. It, like I said, it probably doesn't sound quite right. I would take more time perfecting it, but not for this example. Here we go. One, two, three, four five, six. Okay, yeah, I can. I could even tighten that up a bit, make it sound better, but you get the idea. So that's one of the workarounds, okay? So let's go to the second workaround now. And I'm gonna undo everything, go back to where we were when I had the mistake. And the other way now is to add a second track. So what you could do is go to Tracks, Add New, Mono Track. Okay, and I'm gonna make this a little bigger as well. And then if you wanna hear yourself on track one, leave it unmuted, don't mute it. If you wanna hear yourself and kinda of get back into your rhythm, then awesome, do that. Um, but okay, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make sure that this track is clicked. That's the track that we're gonna be recording on. And we're just gonna listen to ourselves and try and get back into our emotion and do the same thing. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and then we're literally just gonna do the same thing we did and we're just gonna get rid of everything until we said five. And then I'm going to get rid of where I said six and I'm just going to double click it and then I'm going to go to cut and then find where I made the mistake four and I'm just going to paste her right on in. Here we go. All right. And let's see how that turned out. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. You could definitely tell I punched in right there, but you get the idea. That's how you can do it. Now, a secondary option if you wanted to is, let me just undo all of that, is if for whatever reason you did not want to hear yourself on track one, just mute it. Just mute it, and then now you could just one, two, three, four, five, and then you could repeat the same process before. But yeah, that those are the workarounds for punch and roll. I'm sure there's a few other ways that you could probably work around this. I just wanted to show you the two really quickest and easiest ways, the best methods I found so far. And like I said earlier, you know, if there is a fix for this, which I don't think there is, I've, you know, I've scoped to the interwebs and I've tried to find it and I just can't and I've messed around in Audacity and I just cannot seem to find a way to untick this setting or to change it or to fix it. But if you were to happen to know of a fix that I just happen to miss. Maybe it's right in front of me and I just don't see it. Please let me know in the comments. Uh, if you have like an even better way to, to get around this uh, here, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear the way that you do it. I hope this has been helpful. Like I said, my camera finally shipped, so I'm going to get back to my normal videos uh, within the next month. I really hope you guys found this video helpful. Um, please do give me a like and subscribe if you did. Maybe consider sharing this with your friends. Uh, that way I can continue to give you free content like this. And uh, if you do want to find out what kind of a equipment I recommend, microphones, interfaces, really anything, even down to cameras and lighting. Uh, you can go find that at my kit.co channel that you can find at kit.co slash James Younger. And until next time, remember, you know what they say. Are you a voice actor? You want to learn Adobe Audition or Audacity? You can sign up for one of my live classes taught 100% virtually over Zoom, which means you can join from the comfort of your own home no matter where you are. And I record each class, and at the end of the night, I send you the recording of class so you can retake this course as many times as you want for the rest of your life. Or if you want to go through the course at your own pace, you can sign up for my on-demand version that you can find over at my website. Link in the description. The good news is, even though the classes cover DAWs like Adobe Audition or Audacity, they are so much more than DAW classes. I don't just cover everything you see on the screen right now. I also have one entire week dedicated to the most important part in making sure you have professional sounding audio. How to acoustically treat and soundproof the space that you're recording in, your home studio. Not only that, but I evaluate your audio and your home studio individually throughout all the weeks in class to make sure your home studio and your audio is just as competitive as the top bookers in the industry. So, if you're interested, you can find links in the description, and if you're not, well, you know what they say.